Welcome to Priesthood 101, starting your ministry. I am Dave Farman. I'm the first elder of the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship. And I'm Christine Farman, the elect lady in the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship. In this first week, we are going to be talking about what the priesthood actually is. Uh, 1 Peter 2.5 says, Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Okay, let's open with a prayer. Elohim Shaddai, we come before thee this day, humbly and in meekness, prayerful that we'll learn more of thee and how to serve thee better. As ministers in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, we thank thee for this opportunity that we have to learn with and from one another and to teach one another. Please fill us with thy spirit. Help Christine and I to speak spirit to spirit that those that hear this will do so with spiritual ears and bless us as we speak that we will speak your spiritual message. These things we pray in the name of thy beloved Son, even Jesus Christ. So mote it be. Amen. Amen. So what is the priesthood? In Revelations 1, 5 through 6, it says, Jesus Christ loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests, and I would also add queens and priestesses, unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We've been talking about the priesthood, and we're not going to get into great detail here. Um, obviously, this is a topic that's very rich that we could go in, in really, really hard and heavy, but this is a 101 class. So the real, the definition we're going to be talking about today is going to be the priesthood as the power of God. And, and in this case, it will be in your ministry. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. That's 1 Corinthians 4.20. We're called to minister to others. This, this isn't done by memorizing scripture or debating what scripture means or various theologies. It is a power that the Lord has given us, an authority that the Lord has given us as he has anointed us, his servants, to reach out into our communities and represent the Lord. So in conjunction with that, we have service. In Isaiah 149, says that when we are in the service of your fellow beings, you are only in the service of your God. The service is the power of God in action. It's an expression of Christ's place in our hearts and in our lives. When we are serving others, we need to be careful that we are not using our service to feed our own egos or with the ex expectation of return of a uh, spiritual or physical nature. We need to make sure that we are, are focused on serving so that we are doing God's will and God's work. And when you put these two together, you have the power of God and you have the service that God wants us to do, that, that he's called us to do, that is the ministry. And they shall take all the instruments of ministry wherewith they minister in the sanctuary. Numbers 4.12. We are called to serve other people, not to sit up on a pedestal, but to be the servants of those that we are called to work with. Now, there's a variety of different types of ministries. And... Everyone is called to do something different. Uh, but when we are called, we are called into service by the power and authority of God. And because of this, we are given keys to access and use these, these powers of God that we have been endowed with. Which leads us to theurgy and theomaturgy. Theurgy is... Uh, simply the rituals that we perform to draw our mortal selves closer to the spiritual and closer to God. Uh, we tap into our priesthood power of God when performing these rituals. And theomaturgy is also known as miracle working. Um, these include various gifts of the spirit, healing the sick, etc. This is when we're actually doing the works that we're being moved by the spirit to accomplish. It's, it's not just a ritual. It's you know kind of set in stone. This is how you do it. Uh, it, it's when we're actually moving with the flow of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit. In the theurgy, we have various saving rituals that are performed. 
Um, Exodus 18, 20 says, And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt shew them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. And so the works that we are doing, so one is naming and blessing a child, um, another is baptism, the gift of the Holy Ghost, uh, administration of the sacrament, ordaining to the priesthood, and the temple ordinances. So these are just some examples of rituals that we we perform in order to um, in order to draw ourselves closer to God. Uh, we do these rituals for specific reasons and for specific purposes, in order to open our spiritual selves up and to be um, more receptive and to draw closer to God. That closeness allows us to use the endowments that we've been given as ministers for theomaturgy. Jesus said, there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. Miracle working is one of the signs of the true ministers of God. And that doesn't mean that, that there aren't going to be other people doing false signs. When we do these things in the name of God, we're doing them not to be flashy or to set certain expectations, but because there's needs to be met. So some examples we have, you know, seeing angels and ministering spirits, uh, the gift of healing being healed, not the laying out of hands with the oil, that would be theurgy, but this is when you're actually like telling someone, be healed, and they're healed because the spirit has healed them, not the spirit in combination with a ritual. Um, the word of faith, this is you know, knowing without knowing how you know. The spirit of prophecy, to see the past, present, future, the sealing power, um, binding on heaven and earth, and, and working various other miracles. Uh, these are all things that, that we do because we've developed a relationship with God that allows us to connect to that power and, as we're moved by the Spirit, do these things. And when we talk about miracles, I just want to kind of make this clear for a second. People think, oh, well, you know, we're going to talk about moving mountains. Sometimes the mountain we move is being told by the Spirit that you need to take groceries to someone or being in the right place yeah. and, and following the spirit to influence others yeah, exactly being in the right place at the right time because the spirit has drawn us there and if we don't have that relationship it's one thing to just do rituals theomaturgy requires that relationship so moving forward let's talk about the actual gifts of the spirit there are two main scriptures that refer to these one is by paul in first corinthians for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 8-12. And the other one is Moroni in the Book of Mormon. So then in Moroni, this is Moroni 10, uh, it's verse 9 in the RAV, verse 8b in the OPV. There are different ways these gifts are administered but it is the same God who worketh all in all. And they are given by the manifestations of the Spirit of God unto men to profit them. So we're gonna kind of go over these as listed by Moroni. They're, they're kind of the same similar list. Um, but we'll start off by talking about uh, teaching through the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. It's one thing to be wise of the world and to have worldly knowledge, but when we are using these gifts of the Spirit, we have access to the wisdom of God. We have access to the knowledge of God's word. Um, that goes beyond human or mortal understanding and allows us to speak spirit to spirit. Because that's really the only way to communicate as fellow Christians one to another in a way that we understand in a godly way. So exceeding great faith is faith that goes beyond a, a simple or basic faith. It's, it's a faith that is a, a pure knowledge of, of the truth of something. In Kabbalah, there's this idea that 
Faith isn't things hoped for and unseen. Faith is the things that we actually know. That is the exceedingly great faith. And then we talked a little bit about the work of mighty miracles already. But basically, the work of the mighty miracles, this would be the, the gift or the ability to perform the miracles of the priesthood in ways that are beyond human comprehension. So prophesying concerning all things. When I spoke a moment ago about word of wisdom and, and knowledge through the Spirit, you are wise, you have wisdom, and you know things, but prophesying, that, that goes even deeper. You see the past, present, and future. You see things the way that God does. Now, we're finite beings. We don't see everything, but through this gift of the Spirit, we gain access as the Lord allows and requires us to see, to prophesy concerning all things. Beholding angels and ministering spirits, whether it be through our spiritual eyes, our physical eyes, or both, it's it's not just seeing angels, which is possible. It's, it's a real thing. I've done it. I've met others that have done it. It's also the ministering spirits, and, and I know people have had this as well, where a, an angel comes to you and, and gives you laying on of hands. And it ministers. It, it's, a, it's a very, very special gift of the Spirit that really deepens your relationship with God that you can't access without having it as a spiritual gift. The gift of tongues is the ability to speak in a language unknown to the speaker. And the gift of the interpretation of tongues is the ability to express the words of an unknown tongue into one that can be understood. In conjunction with that is also the ability to speak and understand spirit to spirit. So what are the limits to God's power and his kingdom there shall be no end Luke 1 33b so the priesthood is only limited by our faith uh, we're able to exercise our faith by utilizing the priesthood in our lives and as we do so both our faith and our priesthood power will grow and become greater and it's important to understand that these gifts of the spirit these priesthood keys uh, whether they be for rituals or for miracles they can be used by men and women alike. There are three levels. Seeker, those who are, are, are find, trying to find God. Disciple, those who are following God. And minister, those who are helping the seekers and disciples get where they need to be. Everyone is a seeker. Those that seek and find discipleship continue to seek as disciples. And those that join the ministry are still seeking also and are, in addition to that, disciples. And all of these, all three of these, have the ability to use the priesthood. When someone says a prayer and that prayer is answered, that is the priesthood in action. So what are the limits to that priesthood in action? It's just the faith that we have in the Lord. We hope we've covered all the basics for you. We will be continuing uh, this series of classes on the priesthood in coming weeks. We hope that you will join us. If you have any questions in the meantime, because we are doing this every other week, um, feel free to reach out. My email is dfarriman at cjccf.org. Christine's is kfarriman at cjccf.org. We have other additional resources available at our website, cjccf.org. And uh, follow us on Facebook. God bless you.